Adam Smith is an applied climatologist at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. He's one of the country's leading experts on the cost of weather disasters. But Hurricane Helene was the first time he experienced one firsthand at his family's home outside of Asheville, North Carolina. And Adam, it's a great pleasure and honor to have you. And I just want to first ask how you guys are doing. Chris, thank you for having me. Um, we're doing okay, but certainly the last week and a half has been very challenging for the entire uh, community of Western North Carolina cities, really just torn apart, flooded, turned upside down uh, by this disaster, which we never really expected it to peak and be as bad as it has been. Yeah, let me ask about that. I, everyone that I've talked to from there or his friends or family from there, and I've talked to a bunch of people, um, they describe it in these sort of biblical terms, a kind of like unthinkable, like a, a, a movie. I mean, you're someone who studies this. How would you describe it? I mean, it's, a cataclysm is, a, is a, a rare word, but it's it's that bad. It will take years for us to rebuild so many communities, so much infrastructure. Perhaps there's an irony. We hope to learn from these different extreme events that hit all parts of the country. For example, over the last five years, there have been more than 100 separate billion dollar weather and climate disasters all parts of the country from hurricanes to droughts to wildfires to flooding and back in 2004 right before i moved to Asheville, um hurricane francis came through the last big flood they put the water pipes 25 feet below the ground the backup water pipes those backup plans from what we tried to learn from hurricane francis in 2004 those were also washed away so wow. it just shows us the 20th century and even 20th 21st century infrastructure sometimes is, is, is challenged by these extremes we're facing today. Yeah, I want to show this chart. You, this is what you study. You full-time study for, for the civil yes. service of our government, um, the cost of weather disasters. This is from yep. your unit, Noah, showing the, the rise in billion-dollar weather disasters. Um, and that, you know, we're, we, you see that top line there going up. Now, part of that is where we're building density. It's not all climate. But the costs here just seem like I mean, as just thinking about what the costs are going to be, obviously the human toll, the, the, the uh, you know, the psychological toll, the health toll, but just the dollars and cents of, of Helene and now Milton, I, it boggles the mind. Yeah, I mean, with Helene and Milton now back to back, these once in a century events, first for Western North Carolina, second for the West Coast of Florida, again, within two weeks, um, we'll be above $100 billion yet again this year. Um, uh, these billion dollar disasters used to happen once every three months back in the 1980s. Over the last decade, they've happened closer to every three weeks. So it just wow. shows you responding to these in all parts of the country are increasingly, increasingly difficult. And the trends are really going in the wrong direction from, for all these hazards. And climate change is certainly supercharging many of these trends. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 one of the, some of the numbers I, I saw out of the Helene and Asheville were just like incomprehensible. The sheer amount of water, inches and inch feet of water in, in, a, in a short amount of time. The, the numbers we're seeing from Milton. Again, weather is a complex system. Climate is a complex system. Generally, though, it does seem like the, the arrow is going in one direction. The more energy you pump in the atmosphere, the more you're essentially rolling loaded dice when it comes to these kinds of things. That's exactly right. We have more energy in the ocean. We have more energy in the atmosphere. So we're getting more explosive droughts and wildfires in the West. We're getting more flood events for a warmer atmosphere holds more water vapor and therefore more rainfall in the East. Six out of the last eight years in the United States, we've been hit by category four, or category five hurricanes. That is the highest such frequency on record dating back to 1851 for the top end wow. storms. And as you mentioned, yes, our exposure and our vulnerability are also compounding the, the challenges we face in trying to manage our way uh, to a, a more resilient future. But whether it's wildfire, drought, flooding, hurricanes, a lot of these events are being supercharged by climate change. And, you know, our, our future is dictated by the, the decisions we make in the present. Just at a personal sort of human to human level, someone who now I think you're not you're not in your home. Um, you lived outside Asheville, if I'm not mistaken, you're, you're not there. And you've got, you know, family members and community members, I imagine, like, what do you say to your fellow Americans about what this could look like if it comes for them or the folks that are preparing in, in, in Florida in the, in the West Coast, on the Gulf Coast there? I mean, even studying these events and you feel like you know them well, uh, certainly they can shock you and surprise you. And that's what we're experiencing in Western North Carolina. Unfortunately, in a few days, I think many people in the West Coast of Florida will experience that same sense of shock and, and loss in terms of what their lives and livelihoods used to look like. And yeah, uh, it, I mean, I study this 
quite deeply and the trends are not linear. They're, they're becoming more exponential for the impacts in terms of not just dollars, but also you know, the impacts on millions of people's lives and livelihoods. And unfortunately, climate change is a, is a multiplying fa uh, force uh, that amplifies a lot of these uh, extremes into billion dollar disasters. And uh, I, I really wish just from a personal level, professionally and personally, that we would not see these trends. Uh, but all signs really point to more of this happening in the future. And so, yes, we need to learn from them. Make better decisions on the policy front and the technological front. Um, and, uh, you know, you know, for our children, our grandchildren looking forward to the future, you know, what we do today really doesn't matter. Yeah, that 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 post hurricane bearing the backup water lines 24 feet and that not being deep enough is a detail that is really going to stick with me as we think about what we're encountering and what we're going to have to mobilize across all society, the federal government, every level of government as we sort of start marching into this new era. Adam Smith, I really hope that you and your family and, and the people in your life are good and we, we're, we're, everyone in the country is sending you uh, the best possible wishes.